There is so much dating advice out there that teaches you how to behave while dating in a way that is inauthentic and isn't an expression of your highest self in order to get the guy, hook him in, you know, get the ring. You can achieve the same outcome in dating whilst being in your highest version of yourself. If you learn these healthy dating boundaries that will only let people in that are worthy of your time without manipulation, without playing games. In this lesson, I'll show you the three ways to set dating boundaries that screen for high value men and people. That if you follow these steps correctly, you can also be sure that they'll be compatible with you. Stick around to the end of the lesson because I will show you the principle of energetic dating boundaries that is going to change your dating experience forever. If you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is Amy and I help women who get anxious in love and attract unhealthy relationship cycles to feel confident, secure and safe in their body so they can date to create a healthy, secure relationship with a person that they truly deserve. And if you want more content like this, please subscribe to my channel, click the bell button so you get the notification because I'm posting new lessons like this every week. Now, before we begin, I want to let you know that a few places have opened up on my calendar with me and my team for the Love by Design program. If you want more information on how to apply for that free call, stick around to the end of the lesson and I'll show you then. Now, there's some really common dating advice here on YouTube that teaches you tactics, tools and tips to effectively draw in people. And this is where we have no boundaries, right? We're kind of going outside of ourselves in order to change how other people feel about us. This is really problematic because having no boundaries when you're dating is going to call in all different types of people. People that are emotionally unavailable and people that do have perhaps narcissistic personality disorder, which is overdiagnosed here, but it is a thing. And it's really important to understand that people that are emotionally unavailable can appear as a great package up front, right? They can look like they're available, they can seem healthy and secure, but those dating behaviors come out after three or four months. That's the time that it takes for that sort of facade to crack. So trying to pursue people in this way based on that initial attraction isn't gonna work for you. And it's also not gonna work because you're not being authentic, which is really what we're talking about today. On the flip side, if you set boundaries that are too rigid, you know, you're going to push all different types of people away, including healthy, available people as well. So this might be where you're being too picky. You might be a little bit avoidant or you've got some subconscious patterning running that only really calls in a certain type of people and your filter is very narrow. Now, you know this deeper attachment wounding is going on on the dating scene because when you are with healthy, secure people, they kind of appear a little bit boring to you. <laughs> You're used to feeling that attraction of your attachment uh, mechanism being activated, right? That little bit of anxiety is actually your deeper wounding that's telling you there's some familiarity going on. So we wanna actually set these boundaries so that we can discern partners in our sphere when we're dating from a healthy place, ensure that we are actually choosing from a healthy place, as well as making sure that we are also attracting only healthy partners. So the first way to set healthy boundaries when dating is to understand this concept of value exchange. Now, value, self-value is how you treat yourself, how you perceive yourself and your intrinsic value. And this teaches other people how to treat you. Now, high value men and high value people will naturally see themselves in a high value light. They will place their own time and energy as their highest um, sense of importance above meeting a stranger such as yourself on a first date. And they will be very intentional about how they use their time and energy as well. So if you're approaching uh, a first date or dating from a lower sense of self-value and you're meeting a high value person, they're going to pick up on that straight away that you're placing yourself as a, as a lower person. Or using these tactics that I've already mentioned that's teached so frequently here um, to try and boost you know, their ego or um, make them seem more important than you. A high value person is going to be onto that straight away. They will see that and lose interest because they are onto their ego. They're smart about their ego. <laughs> they know their ego well and they know when someone is appealing to that in a lower value way. And I'm not saying that they're overly suspicious by nature. They're just self-aware, right? They're aware of those dynamics within themselves and they're aware of how those dynamics work with other people as well. And they're just not interested in playing games or being manipulated. 
Now, if this person isn't a high value person um, and you are acting from that uh, integrity and you're placing boundaries that place your time and energy as the most important thing for you while you're dating, um, a lower value person is going to try and transgress those boundaries. They're going to try and permeate them. And ways that people do that is through over pursuing and chasing and showing you lots of affection really early on when they don't know you at all. We, we also commonly know that to be love bombing. And they're going to play into your ego. They're going to try to attempt to make you feel really good about yourself. And when we're not onto our own ego, it's easy to get um, sideswiped by that and think that there's actually a genuine connection going on. But we just, we just haven't gotten smart about how people can also play into our ego in the same way that other high value people have. Another way that lower value people might transgress your boundaries is that they might make you feel bad about your boundaries. <laughs> if you've ever set a boundary and someone's made you feel bad about it, I want you to question their sense of integrity around their boundaries. Do they have healthy boundaries in their life? There's a high chance that they don't. So if both of you internally value yourself in this way and this value is matched and balanced, you'll notice that your boundaries are not only going to be respected, they're actually going to be a very attractive and desirable quality about you that that will draw other high value people to you when you're dating them. If there's an uneven value exchange and it's where you're undervaluing yourself, a high value person isn't going to be able to hold space for you because they can see how you're lowering your own value and that just isn't interesting and attractive to them. And they're also not going to use their power over you, right? They are aware of how vulnerable you are in that kind of smaller space, but they're not going to take advantage of you in that way. That is a low value play. Now on the flip side, if they undervalue themselves, and you're in integrity, you're in your own sense of self and know your own value, things are going to seem very chaotic. There's going to be a lot of emotions. There's going to be a lot of playing and a lot of manipulation going on that's going to feel like you've been run over by a bus. And I know we've all been there. We've all acted from a lower sense of value and we've gotten into relationship too soon. We've rushed in. So it will feel a bit chaotic like that. But when you're dating a high value person and you're in integrity yourself, it's going to feel very slow. It's going to unfold very evenly and organically, and it's going to be very well integrated in your life. And you probably are going to want to feel that it's you want it to move forward, but you can hold the tension in that healthily, right? You know that there's that potential there and you're okay to sit in a slightly uncomfortable space. And if you struggle with pacing when it comes to dating and knowing how to move through the stages of dating, I want you to watch my video on that next. So what do these boundaries actually feel like when we set them? Let's look a little bit more about how to set these boundaries that aren't too rigid that push people away and they're not too porous which allows people to walk over us. They're flexible and they're in integrity. The dynamic you need to know about in order to set these flexible boundaries is what I call the push-pull dynamic. Now if you've seen other videos on my channel you know that I talk about this dynamic a lot because it is a game changer for all stages of the dating and relationship process. But here specifically in relation to dating boundaries it can help us to be really aware of how both parties are feeling about the container. Now the push-pull dynamic is uh, a natural law of connection and relation. There is always rupture and repair in all relationships. So take a relationship where you're living with someone. When you leave for work for the day, that's a mini rupture. And when you come back together uh, at the end of the day, that's a mini repair. And there are little rituals that you can create in order to um, make that transition from rupture and repair or pull push <laughs> to feel a little bit more natural and organic. Um, and one of my favorite teachers, Esther Perel, calls this clicking and unclicking. We need to get used to that process of clicking and unclicking, um, push, pull. When we're dating in particular, it is very, very prominent. And if you have any kind of insecurity or anxiety in your past, that can push you off your sense of self if you're not aware of this dynamic. So let's dive into it. 
You want to ensure that when you set a boundary that there is a healthy amount of flexibility which is a healthy amount of push-pull in that boundary that you're setting so that it, when it's received by the receiver, the person you're setting the boundary with, they don't feel that they're being pushed away too much and they don't feel like they can actually walk over you. They are aware of that little tension there. So let's take an, an example of a boundary that you might have if you're dating someone and you speak on the phone regularly and you require that you need to speak on the phone before 9 p.m. After 9 p.m. it's just too late. Now on an evening that you've arranged to speak on the phone and you haven't gotten the call from them by 9 p.m., a rigid boundary would be to just turn your phone off and ghost them for the night, <laughs> right? And just to kind of set that in stone that you don't take calls after 9 p.m. A porous boundary would be to continue waiting for their call late into the night and whenever they do call to take the call, not say anything about it. Um, maybe say a little bit about it because you are still having a boundary, but it's pretty porous. A flexible boundary in this context is to be proactive and reach out to them and say, hey, it's getting close to 9 9 p.m. or it's 9 p.m. I need to get to bed. Do you still want to have that call? Um, because I'm not available to take calls generally after 9 p.m. There's a bit of flexibility there. They may not be aware that that's a boundary of yours and so you're, you're over communicating that standard and you're also allowing the other person to experience that boundary in a healthy way. Hey, this is where my line is, just letting you know that at the moment we're kind of crossing it a bit but I still really want to chat with you or whatever you choose to be the outcome of that um, and you know, let's move forward somehow in a proactive way. It allows you to place a little bit of tension into the space and let the other person know where your edges are. Know that those edges are a little bit flexible, they're not too porous, but you're still maintaining a sense of um, your own integrity and what is okay for you and what isn't. Now in terms of the value exchange, this is going to directly impact the level of push-pull that you allow. Um, so we can actually use this to screen for high value people as much as we can make sure we, we're being high value in the way that we use push-pull when we set boundaries. So our perceived value of self informs how much push-pull we allow in any kind of dynamic when we're dating. So let me say that again, too much push Right, if you're pursuing too much and being overtly um, instigative of all of the interactions and texts and phone calls, that is directly related to a lower value of self. And if you pull away too much, if you have those rigid boundaries and you're just kind of ghosting that person, that directly relates to a lower perception of the other. So in order to use this for screening when you're dating, you want to observe the natural push-pull between the two of you. Of course, you want to make sure that you're maintaining a nice dance within yourself, but then observe how they reach into you and how they pull away. Is there a sense that when they pull away, they're still available to you emotionally and time-based with boundaries? Or when they pull away, are they just pulling away and you don't hear from them? There's a good chance they're emotionally unavailable if that happens. And again, are they pushing in too much? Are they reaching out to you too much? Are they being too much in terms of frequency of communication, um, you know, level of communication, are they oversharing, are they dumping to you? That is also an indication that they have a low perceived value of their self and they're crossing that boundary with you. So we can use this principle to observe their push-pull and we can also use this principle to see how they're setting boundaries, you know. So as a high value person, they will be setting some sort of boundary energetically or in the way that they conduct themselves and you then want to observe yourself and how you manage the dance with them or are you being pulled off your sense of self and lowering your own value and being too over accommodating of their, their boundaries. Now please let me know in the comments below how this is landing for you and what you notice about boundary setting when dating. Does any of this um, energetic work uh, apply to you or land with you? I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Now the last way to set a boundary in order to screen for high value men is to understand what I call the 50-50 rule. Let me explain this quickly first. The 50-50 rule is a rule that allows us to understand that between two people, 100% of the space that's taken up between them, that exists between them in that conversation or in that room, 
uh, consist 50% of one person, that's you, and 50% of the other. So in terms of what you're thinking and feeling and your experience of that conversation and that, that situation is a valid 50% of the 100% that's going on. And as is the case for the other person, the way that they're experiencing it and feeling it as well. Now, what happens problematically in relationships is one person will narrow their experience and turn it into maybe five or 10% and take allow the other person to take up too much of that space, right? Overvalue their experience to be right or true, right? We want to make sure that we are taking up our full 50% as much as we're allowing for the other person to take that percentage up as well without devaluing ourselves or overinflating the other or overinflating ourselves and letting our ego come into play and squashing effectively the other person. So when it comes to dating, we can screen for high value people and the way that they embody and show up in their 50%, right? We want ideally a person who knows all parts of themselves, they're self-aware. And that means that they're talking about their quirks and their flaws and their faults and they're not worried about it, right? They're aware of their shadow and they're not afraid to show up in all parts of their 50%. And of course, on the flip side, you are learning to do the same and much of the content on this channel is teaching us how to really embrace all parts of ourselves and feel secure in ourselves. So the more that we can show up and not hide parts of who we are in order to press, impress the other person, but really embrace our flaws and quirks and, and come at our 50% from a very compassionate and open perspective, the more we will be showing up in a high value way as well. So like I said, lower value people tend to filter themselves and their 50% or put a mask on and show up as a small version of who they are. And if you want to know more about how to fully show up in your authentic self on a date, I want you to watch this video next. So as you're on a date and as you're talking and getting to know each other, I want you to observe his 50% or their 50%. How are they expressing their true self how are they saying you know this is this is one of my flaws and they're not making excuses for it or saying sorry they're just stating a fact this is the the more challenging aspects of their personality this is just the way they are um, you know how do they talk about themselves and their quirks in this way do they seem self-accepting as well as self-aware. And when you do the same, when you talk about your own quirks and flaws, um, how do they respond? How do they uh, react to that? Do they seem dismissive or do they seem judgmental? Or are they open and accepting of your flaws because they're showing that they're open and accepting of their own? So a really great boundary to set when you're dating uh, to embrace the 50-50 rule is to practice showing up in your full 50% to another person. <laughs> and we start by practicing this on our own when we're single by embracing our 100% in that space, like really expanding out and acknowledging and accepting all of our flaws, all of our shadow, you know, shining a light on it and being okay with it. And notice when you do go into a, a date or when you do have a conversation with someone, your tendency to disown parts of yourself, to put a filter on, or put a mask on and to, you know, not, I know you're not disingenuously doing it, but effectively you're filtering and, and putting a mask on who you truly are, which is stopping that other person from fully getting to know you. I want to teach you this last piece around energetic boundaries, and I'm going to keep this 50-50 slide up because it, it's a really great container for us to visually understand our energetic boundaries. You know, if you grew up in a family where there was an enmeshed relationship that you had with a caregiver and there was codependency, you might have a somewhat fluid and enmeshed sense of self with others that you become intimate with. This is where you really blur the perception of who is me and who is you, right? The we takes over and you kind of lose your identity and you lose your sense of self. And if this is a tendency of yours and you want to learn how to cultivate interdependency in relationship, I want you to watch this video next. So we need to maintain our energetic boundaries when we're coming into relationship and dating another person if we have this tendency in the past. Um, and this is where we know where our edges are. 
We know our identity. We know to be true that this is sacred to us and no one else can come into our 50% and tell us what, what we are experiencing or what we aren't experiencing or make a judgment call on who we are. You know, we, we need to hold that container of who we are quite strong and be very vigilant about protecting it. And in holding that energetic space, particularly when you date and come into relationship with another person, you're going to come across a lot of differences and conflict is going to occur. And it is really important to learn to be uncomfortable in this space because we want to change our 50% in order to fit in, right? That's our pattern from our codependent or enmeshed past. So being uncomfortable and sometimes disappointing and letting other people down um, is a normal part of holding space for yourself in your experience. So I want to teach you a quick tool to really strengthen the sense of your 50% when you come into conversation and dating another person. And that's to practice holding a visualization that there is a bubble of energetic space around you. You know, you are enveloped by this sleeve and it's a very thin film, right? Like it can move, it's very flexible, but inside it is what makes you, you. No one can permeate it. No one can get inside and start changing around the contents and ingredients of it. That's your job. And it's so easy to, you know, when we get intimate with someone, maybe we fall in love with them, to want to expand that bubble out and allow them to come in and start making, you know, um, changes and alterations. <laughs> so we need to learn how to really hold that bubble firm when we come in close and be intimate with another person as well. And that really comes down to respect of self and respect of their bubble um, and compassion and allowance for differences and allowance for being two different people in this partnership. So learn to be an advocate for your 50%. Learn to be your most loyal supporter when it comes to setting this energetic boundary and feeling this kind of bubble around you that no one is allowed to permeate and you are taking 100% responsibility for what goes on inside of that. And if you want to know more about how to further strengthen your internal sense of self, I have a complete three-step strategy that I teach in my free masterclass on the proven three steps to secure love. You can join me in that masterclass in the link below. I also have a free Facebook group and I would really love to see you in there. If you'd like to join that, the link to the group is below. And if you do want to apply for a free one-to-one -one call with me and my team, my calendar link is in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, please click like um, and subscribe to this channel because like I said, I'm teaching lessons like this every week. And for now, here are some follow-on videos to help you move one step closer to an incredible relationship with yourself and your partner. And for now, I'll see you in the next video.